It is now 808 here at WCCO. Welcome back. You are listening to Steel Talking, and I'm your host, Geraldine Steele. And uh, get ready for the um, summer reading series that we're doing at 830. Our author is African American, and uh, we're going to talk about the Olympics with him, the basketball stars from the Olympics, and actually talk about what basketball means uh, to the African American community specifically. Not just really that community, but more, but from that perspective. It's a very interesting read, Asphalt Gods. All right, this half hour we are talking about uh, really providing supplies for students. You know, I remember when my children were growing up, I would always take them into uh, the malls, um, and I would buy as many supplies and backpacks as I could, or you could uh, pick from the Christmas tree or the holiday tree at Harmar Mall. I remember going to Harmar specifically, and um, you would pick a name off of that, and you'd go and buy whatever the child needed that they put on this star or this ornament, and you buy it, and you you uh, put it in a crate or something like that right by the tree. And um, it was really good for us to do that because we don't want our children to assume that the supplies that they have, uh, the bed that they sleep in, all that they have comes uh, so easily to everyone because it does not. Well, Kids in Need Foundation is a foundation that really changed lives through making sure the children have the, the school supplies that they need, and they partner with companies and organizations to uh, get these supplies around the country, not just here in Minnesota, but around the United States. And I, I'm, I, I'm joining me to talk about this, and I'm really curious about how long this has been going on and how successful it has been. Uh, Dave Smith is joining us. And again, this is Kids in Need Foundation. How are you doing, Dave? I'm doing fine. Thanks, Cheryl. How are you tonight? I'm doing well. Thanks for joining us. Tell us about what, how you were involved with Kids in Need Foundation. I'm the executive director, and I've been involved for, this is our 21st year, I've been involved for most all of those 21 years, uh, initially as a board member, and for the last, um, I guess, 10 years as a staff member. You know, you don't hear that too often. Usually the staff member moves up to the board. You went to the yeah. board and moved to the staff member. That's amazing. <laughs> I, I said that gives me a different perspective having sat on both sides of the table there. Yeah, I bet the board will be clamoring to get you back on it, because you do have those two perspectives, and it's interesting what you find. What's the difference between when you were on the board for Kids in Need Foundation versus being the executive director? Uh, you know, I don't think there's too much difference. You know, we have, we're very fortunate and we have a, bo- a board from people across the country, executives, high level people who really care and have a passion for the cause. And I was telling somebody earlier today that, you know, even though we have votes on topics, very, very rarely do we have a contentious vote on anything. You know, we all remember what the cause is, getting school supplies to the kids who need them. I think what I mean by that, um, after serving on a few boards myself, is that, you know, you get a lot of statistics when you're a board member, Right. You serve on various committees and that sort of thing. But when you're in the trenches, when you're working with the people, the volunteers, including the staff that are making it happen, your perspective changes. And usually uh, greatly. And I'm just curious to know what has surprised you the most or what is the thing that you've learned that you didn't know before? I I think that we if we all remember that the, the staff's job is to run the organization on a daily basis. Um, and the board's job is a governance to lead us in the right direction, set a tone and follow to that. And we really require and ask always that our board, it's not just a seat that you sit at a table every once in a while for a meeting. For example, I send our board an update every Friday with what happened this week, just five or six bullet points about what happened so they can be engaged on a year-round basis in what we're doing. That's excellent. And have they responded and said, you know, this is something we needed to see? Oh, I've been doing it now for about five or six years, and it's amazing, Gerald. I know they read them because I get comments back from many of them every week. Some, some, you know, oh, this is great. Can I help you with this? How can we do this together? Things like Mm -hmm. that. It's it's terrific, yes. I can just imagine. So here you are um, really helping so many people. Here in the state of Minnesota, um, how many children are you helping? Do you know the number for that? Yes, we have, uh, let me just, can I tell you four main programs we have? One, the first is a, a national network, uh, we call them teacher resource centers, where teachers in low-income schools can go and shop, and I will put quotation marks around shop because there's no charge for the supplies, for items to take back to the classroom. There's 38 across the country. There is one here. You were mentioning Harmar Mall I heard earlier tonight. It's one not very far from Harmar Mall in, in Roseville, um, and we Serve in that center. We serve about five thousand teachers and seventy-five or eighty thousand students. That's here in the Twin Cities. Mm-hmm. We also help students out state through one of our programs. We work closely with people on uh, Leech Lake Reservation, for example, in providing supplies. Mm-hmm. So we try to get to as many as we can. 
Uh, you mentioned on a national basis, last year we provided school supplies to 4.8 million students and 150,000 teachers. Say that one more time. Say that statistic one more time. Wow. We provided supplies to, well, let me give you a little perspective. In 1995, our first year, we thought we did well. We provided 25,000 students and 1,000 teachers with supplies. Last year, our 20th year, we provided 4.8 million students and 150,000 teachers with supplies. My goodness. You can really see how the need has grown, and that must be a little disheartening. Well, there's about 16 million kids in the United States that live in poverty, and we don't know that all of them don't have the supplies they need, but we know a vast majority of them. But we're realistic. When families are struggling for food and housing, school supplies is not going to be the top item on their list, and that's where we try to come in and fill that void. It is a huge void, and knowing that you are out there, Kids in Need Foundation is out there making it happen. There are so many churches that are doing the same thing, uh, but when you talk about those kind of numbers, we need all hands on deck, don't we? We we do indeed, and, you know, this this is a time of year when there's a lot of organizations that will do supply drives, and that's terrific. That's a big help for us. People sometimes say, do you find that to be a competitive situation? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. We encourage that. We can't reach them all. But our program, too, Geraldine, is really based on a year-round need. You know, I I say if a student has the supplies when they start the school year right now, they're going to run out of those supplies. Um, So our program is really based on that replenishment throughout the school year. Throughout the school year. Exactly. Teachers shop throughout the school year. Wow, that's incredible. When you talk about supplies, the first thing I think about are pencils and erasers and uh, paper and folders and that sort of thing. But is there more? Are there calculators and and, uh, iPads or something? Yeah, not so much the technology part of it. No, it is basically what you said, crayons, notebook, pencils, glue sticks, things like that. There are other things that we call classroom supplies, which would be um, items that teachers would use for incentives for the classroom things that teachers themselves could use in the teaching process. Is this more for elementary and junior high school students, or is it for high school students as well? We're open for um, for all teachers pre-K through 12 to come and shop for us. To be honest, the vast majority are from elementary and middle school. But we certainly do have high school teachers because we have pens and notebooks and things like that that high school students and teachers need. So how do you how are you funded? We're funded really uh, a little bit different than most not-for-profits. I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but most not-for-profits receive about 85 to 90 percent of their of their cash support from individuals. We uh, get about 95 percent of our support from corporations. So people like 3M, like Target, Office Depot, Elmer's, Bic, locally TCF, uh, Georgia Pacific, uh, and many many other manufacturers and retailers. Mm-hmm. Of course, um, there are those. (laughs) In fact, me, as a mother, I remember uh, going to Target and buying a lot. I mean, I used to go to Target with, you know, $200 in my hand, and I walk out spending 300 bucks. you know. (laughs) It was difficult because I love that store. I really do love the corporation in the store. But I have to tell you, um, you know, some people worry that, oh, am I going to get a backpack with someone's logo across it because they're trying to get, you know, the parents and the children to know that you should come here to shop. But you don't do that, do you? We don't. The, the, the backpacks are generic. You know, I'll tell you a little side story. We had a we had a, an offer last year, and it wasn't in the Twin Cities, but I won't give any names of that. But where it was an attorney who came to us and wanted to give out a number of backpacks in the city. And that's a great program. But he said to me, Dave, I'd also like you to, to take the backpacks from your building, take them outside, and have my name embroidered on them. Well, I had two problems with that. Number one, the logistics of doing that. Right. And number two, I explained to him, these kids have enough stigma already. We don't want to do that. So I was ready to walk away from that, which is hard to do, um, but he agreed. We, um, so he put a you know a water bottle with his name inside or something like that. Yeah. But, yeah, the kids, we don't want people's names on them, no. Yeah, sometimes people don't quite understand. We don't want it. These kids, like I said, have enough stigma. We don't want them to be differentiated in any other way. Yeah. You know, speaking of stories, you have a collection of stories on your website, um, and, and one of them was uh, featuring um, teachers and the impact that this program uh, has had on on what they need and how the children come prepared. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I appreciate that. You know, we've talked for years about impact, but all the data we had was really anecdotal data. So last year we actually took a survey and we received responses from thousands of teachers across the country. And, you know, some of the things we heard back were um, 78% of the kids had increased interest in learning if they had the supplies. 82% of the kids had increased class participation and 92% increased class preparedness. I mean, these are seem like 
really important things, but also easy things to do just by making sure that a kid has a pencil, a notebook, and a glue stick. In fact, one teacher wrote, when families have to choose between food and school supplies, uh, the support of your foundation enables me to reduce some of their worry. You allow me to provide tools to further success, encourage expression, and create an equal education for all my students. And it really is an equalizer. Everyone arrives prepared with the same thing, basically. Maybe some will have more in their backpacks that didn't have the need uh, to come to your foundation or to, to receive this backpack, but everyone has the basics. That's, that's exactly what the, the purpose of what we're trying to do is. We're not saying we make them any smarter. We just want them to have an equal chance in the classroom. Wow, that's amazing. You know, and kids, you know, we call it an investment. Kids are our most valuable asset. We really need to invest in our kids. And everybody has a stake in this. I mean, if these are our future employees, our future teachers, our future leaders. We need to give them a chance to get the education and have the tools in the classroom. With the more than 20 years that you've been involved in this, um, can you tell me, have children come back, uh, written notice, written uh, letters to you, or, or, you know, somehow gotten involved as a volunteer to say, hey, I benefited from uh, this foundation, let me give back, or do they really know where it's coming from? Uh, in a lot of cases, they do. That, that's a terrific question, because we've been around long enough now where some of the kids who were getting supplies 10 or 15 years ago are getting to a point where they do come back. Um, we have an annual gala in the Twin Cities. It's actually on the 14th of September this year. Last year, we had a student who was 14 years old who I had met six, year, er, six years earlier in New Jersey, and he got supplies. And I, I went out and met him. We made a little video about him. He had never seen the video. He came to our uh, gala and spoke um, and did a terrific job. This year, we have a student who's coming from Cincinnati, who is a sophomore in high school now, and has been getting supplies from the center in Cincinnati since elementary school. And she now is a volunteer at the center. So she's gone back to give back. How about that? Wow. That's really great to hear. I often say that, you know, if we're successful, Gerald, We want to turn today's recipients into tomorrow's donors. It has to be that way. It absolutely has to be this way. By the way, your network is vast and deep. Is there any corporation that you haven't been able to get on board that you're looking to get on board? Of course, Amazon has now moved in to the Minnesota Fray. Uh, As you know, they have a a distribution center either out in Chanhassen or Chaska. I can't remember. Um, But I'm just wondering, have they joined forces? Interesting question again, because Amazon, we started a program with Amazon about a week ago. We're on their website now for their Prime members. Um, they're given an opportunity to buy a school supply, and it's being shipped to the Kids in Need Foundation here in the Twin Cities. And how is that being shipped? It's, that it's paid for through the Prime membership, so Amazon shipping it from their warehouse to our facility in Roseville. Oh, that's incredible. Well, well done. <laughs> I mean, really, you have some uh, incredible... Um, partners uh, that that have really joined you in making this happen across well, we the. Work, we work hard, and the challenges there. You know, I sometimes you get, you talk about the numbers before the 4.8 million students and things. Um, I should tell you, we have 14 employees nationally, so we make we make use of a lot. Of How many employees. do you have? We have 14 employees nationally. You have 14 employees. And we will distribute um, on an annual basis about 120 million dollars worth of product across the country. I just have to. Think about that for a moment. Wrap, we have to wrap our heads around that, that 14 people get this involved. So so how many volunteers do you have? Uh, hundreds and hundreds of volunteers across the country. And that's what it, it takes, it's really isn't a life, it? It's a lifeblood for us. For exactly. Sure. That's exactly what it takes. You guys make it happen, and then they finish the project. They, they're, the, they're the sprinters at the end of the, <laughs> you know, we they're all, sprinting to put. We, often, we often talk about, um, you know, what we need is your time, your treasures, and your talents. Some people are fortunate enough to have all three, but everybody has some time. So if people are interested in being a part of this, getting involved, um, where do they go? They can go to our website, uh, which is www.kinf. F as in letter, Frank. Yeah, yeah, F as in Frank. First letter of Kids in Need Foundation dot org. Wow. K-I-N-F yeah. as in Frank dot org. Yeah, it's as simple as $25 um, buys a backpack with 20 items in it for a student in the classroom. It's, and can you tell us what those 20 items are right quick? Um, there's uh, two notebooks, three folders, two glue sticks, a couple of pens, a 10-pack of pencils, um, scissors, erasers, rulers. I got most of them, I think, actually. Yeah. So you do not provide even the simple um, calculators? 
We don't. Okay. Uh, we do not, no. Okay. And you don't throw a book in every now and then. <laughs> books are very important. We actually have a library in the center here, so books are a, a critical part of what we do, yes. We have partnership with several book uh, publishers and distributors. And so what do you do with those? Do you put them in the backpack as well we or no? We put them in the backpack, but they're certainly in, and they're available in all the centers as well for the teachers to take them and take them back to the kids in the classroom. Okay, so they can decide which books fit exactly. their school the best, and they can choose that and you'll send it to them. Exactly. Wow, that's incredible. I wish I had that list. Is it possible for me to get that list? Sure. I would sure. love for you to send me that list. Just email it's, it to my producer at Jimmy. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's a, it's a, the list of books is changing on a, on a, uh, you know, on a regular basis, but uh, we have them categorized by grade and everything as well. Wow, incredible. What a pleasure having you on, Dave. Thank you so much for joining us and telling us more about Kids in Need Foundation. Thanks for putting some light on the subject and told. All right.